All right, guys. So I'm gonna be um, <laughs> I'm gonna be reviewing a book that I've kind of talked about before, but I've never done a review on because I've never been able to read it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, Monster War. Now, Monster War. Most of you guys would know best of this book um, because I based a lot of story ideas off of it. Um, mostly the Disney heroes or the classic Universal monsters. And yeah. This is basically a image top cow, top cow being the other part of like a subsidiary of image, um, and a crossover between the two where we have the top cow super, the top cow heroes, uh, Witchblade, Magdalena, the Darkness, and Tomb Raider. Yeah, I'm not joking. Laura Croft was part of a the Image Comic universe for a hot minute. Let's just let's let's talk about that real quick. Um, yeah, there was a time where literally <laughs> we had an era where <laughs> Laura Croft was part of a um, Laura or Laura Croft was a part of a actual fucking comic book universe, Tomb Raider. And again, Marvel had done this with video game with some characters like Transformers and Micronauts and a few others from Hasbro. But when's the last time we had an actual video game character a part of an actual universe? It was it did start with several Witchblade Tomb Raider crossovers, but after that, yeah, yeah they were just like, like, yeah, Laura Croft is just a part of this universe now. Like, she hangs out with Witchblade, the darkness, and all of that. And yeah, so that's them versus the classic monsters. Um, by classic monsters, I mean Dracula, Frankenstein, the, um, wolf, werewolves, not Wolfman, and Mr. Hyde. So this was a four-part... This was pitched as, like, a four-part event. And what is this event about? It's off-the-wall, as you can think. It is It is quite literally one of the most off-the-wall ideas. Now, this comic is not going for high-end art. In fact, if you've read your image books, if you've especially if you've read your Top Cow books, and seeing the kind of uh, gratuitous violence and nudity in those books, yeah, this this book has, has this. Like, I, I was like... Huh, you know, I know she had pointy. I know she had a pointy chest in the in the original PS One games, but I don't recall Laura's breasts that big. Cause seriously, she has like, I I guess Laura got a boob job or something because yeah, <laughs> she's it's hard not to look at. It's hard not to see. <laughs> anyway, um, this this book doesn't have any bones about what it is. It's like, here's your scantily clad women and your dude who can... And the one guy who can control all these monsters... These demons and shit and fighting monsters. There's your story. There it is. It's a four-part... They they build as like a weird event. So let's get into it. So the story is, is, that Mon is that Mr. Hyde, who has been separated from Jekyll, plans to unle... Using a vast and complicated plan where he needs Dracula, Frankensteins, and werewolves help to bring about these eldritch gods to Earth. It's really ridiculous as it sounds. And along the way, Dr. Jekyll, like I said, Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jekyll have been split from each other. Dr. Jekyll has um, rallied um, the Darkness, Tomb Ra uh, um, Laura Croft, the Witchblade, and the Magdalena in order to fight them. They're really like kind of one-and-done stories, but they're all, like, how they are, they're all interconnected. The first story is Magdalena versus Dracula. And I don't know how many people are fans of Magdalena, but this one really shits on her hard. Because she goes down and becomes like a vampire through half the book. And by half, I mean all of it. Um, so it's really just Mr. H like, uh, Dr. Jekyll, who they kind of, like, fake you out and say that, like, oh, it's, it's Van Helsing. Like, they, like, even I was like, oh, so they got Van Helsing, and then it's revealed, nope, Dr. Jekyll. And I actually kind of like that. I kind of like that it's not like we're using Van Helsing for the umpteenth time. We're actually using Jekyll and having him pay for his sins. So, among others, uh, Mr. Hyde is the mastermind of this, which is kind of odd. Like, it's kind of a weird idea of having Mr. Hyde, of all people, who has, who is like this big hulking gorilla kind of form like you saw in the Van Helsing movie. Um, 
Dracula's kind of not so much a pawn, but more like a partner. And Frank and the Frankenstein monster is like here because he just wants to die and be used. As, it, like he's going to be used as a portal to the realm of the uh, of the Lovecraftian monsters, and he's just like I'm just here to die because I want to die. Oh, werewolves are here for like one thing. They barely play a part in here. Yeah, you see Laura Croft fight a giant two-headed werewolf. That's a sentence I just said. It's not... This book is not trying to go for an Eisner. I will say that. This this book knows exactly what it is. You want to see super... You want to see some, he, like, anti-heroes and video game characters fight monsters. Here's your book. It's actually kind of hard to find these days. I found it at a comic shop in Orlando, um... A few days ago. And it's actually been a book I've always wanted to read. And like I said, it's nothing to... It's it's nothing to... What's the word? It's nothing too important, I would say, if you like... If you are, like, a major fan of, like, the Darkness and Witchblade and maybe seeing them fight classic monsters is really cool. Also, I don't know why Dynamite was involved in any of this. Yeah, I know they have Dracula a lot in their books... But they're, they don't have the license for any of these characters. Technically speaking, Dracula, Mr. Hyde, um, Werewolves, the Frankenstein monster, that's all public domain. Top Cow literally could have done this book without needing them. In fact, it does, and you could say, oh, but maybe it's the, top, it's the Dynamite comic version of those monsters. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is no version of these monsters that Dynamite has ever used in their books. So I don't know why Dynamite got involved in this book at all. But it's pretty fun. And that's really what it is. It's just fun. If you can find this as like a bargain or something, I would give it a look. It's, a, it's just fun. And sometimes crossovers need to be that. Anyway, so you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of Monster War? Did you guys like it, hate it? Um, comment below, let me know. It's kind of nice to finally read the sit down and read the book. And finally find the book that has inspired me to do videos here on YouTube. Like I said earlier, this was the comic that was kind of like, when I heard the idea for it, I was like, oh, that's cool. And that inspired me to do a lot of the versions of the Universal Monsters fighting Disney heroes. So anyway, so there you go. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this review. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.